Hello everyone and a warm welcome to Hedden and to our Monday Thursday service. This the fourth in a series of online and printed services. It seems to me a growing commitment for us to remain connected as a worshipping community. As we continue to come to terms with what isolation means and of course keeping everyone safe and so our grateful thanks go to Jonna, Tim, Juliet and all those involved in bringing us together as a circuit in the difficult circumstances we face together. The word Monday comes to us as an Anglo-French word and it's derived from the Latin meaning mandatum which in our language means commandment. It refers to when Jesus in the upper room during the Last Supper said to his disciples a new commandment I give you love one another even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. It comes from John chapter 13 and verses 34 and 35. Through this service we will journey together and hopefully be drawn into a deeper understanding of what discipleship under a command to love means. Gethsemane will be the setting for our time together. We will continue as we sing the Graham Kendrick hymn, Meekness and Majesty. I introduce those leading us because it's my daughter Katie and her husband Andy. And of course, Zach, my eight weeks old grandson, making his first appearance in an act of worship. They both work for the NHS, so as they join us in this service, please, after they finish, give them a clap. <laughs> Dwells in humanity, kneels in humility and washes our feet. Oh, what a mystery, meekness and majesty. Come out and worship. So this is our God. Your God, this is your God. 
Following on from our opening hymn, we now do our opening prayers. So let's just take a moment to be still, bow our heads as we pray. Dear Lord, be with us at this time as we journey together from that upper room where you broke bread, gave thanks, feeding us, drawing alongside us, sharing in the cup of salvation, your body and blood, giving as a living sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. Then, onward into Gethsemane, a grove which became a place of total isolation for you. Loving Jesus, join us, journey with us into our Gethsemane. Be with us in our isolation and anguish, that we might have a better understanding of what love really means. A command, a commitment, a sacrifice. In doing so, draw near to us, enter in and bring us hope. Amen. Readings taken from Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 to 46. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. 
yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter. Watch and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go, here comes my betrayer. This is a monologue from Colin Barrick. Um, it's uh, titled Gethsemane uh, from the Hidden Chapel. This is Sam. Uh, Colin asked me to do it from uh, horseback like John Wesley, but I think this is about the closer we're going to get to Sam today. Right, here's a monologue. Hi, my name is Peter. There were times when I wished Jesus had left my name as Simon, simply Simon. But he didn't. Peter it is. And somehow had to be fashioned into a rock. Thank God he never gave up on me a sinner, even after all those moments that I seemed to stumble and grovel in my inadequacies. I was such an oaf and regularly fell short of what of being his rock. Maybe you feel like that sometimes? I often cast my mind back to the day before Jesus was crucified, the day he gave us a new understanding of what love is. He had said that there was no greater expression of love than to give up one's life for a friend. What on earth was he talking about? was lost of all of us really. We were still talking of our selfish needs, me included. He then gave us a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. It caused me to tremble. There were people in the room I could not stomach. Jesus then did the most extraordinary thing. He took off his outer robe, he took a towel and then bowl after bowl of fresh water, kneeling down beside each one of us as, we washed, as he washed our feet. I protested, but he had his way. He even washed Andrew's feet. Andrew's feet were disgusting, from a child that smelt worse than a Galilee's fish market on a warm summer's day. Imagine Jesus the Messiah washing my feet. My feet, Andrew's feet, your feet. A demonstration of what love looks like in our social context. Your social context with no exceptions. Love as an inclusive command and not an inclusive, exclusive desire. We live in a world where the radical and extravagant love of God is what we all need. So as we all try to fulfill the command to love God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength, our neighbours as ourselves and now one another as he loved us, we all start to imagine a much richer understanding of follow me. It was in the upper room. We were to share the Passover meal, to remember our history, share our story of salvation and miraculous escape from our ancestors from the crushing servitude of Egypt. We took on board once again the need to remember. We were now asked to remember a new covenant in his blood, celebrated in community for forgiveness of our sins. It was humbling. It was here he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, giving it to us, saying, Eat. He then invited us to take a sip of wine. This is my body, this is my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And we were to do it in remembrance of him, an even deeper understanding of what God's grace means for all of us. We then left the upper room and went to the Garden of Gethsemane, a special place. We sat there with Jesus. In the same way, after many meals, especially Passover, we all fell asleep. Even though Jesus had specifically asked us to pray and stay alert. A few of us were then asked to isolate with him, away from the rest and stay alert and pray. To my utter embarrassment, I dropped off again. John woke briefly to hear him ask the Father to take his cup away and also offer himself in love, as he said, your will, not mine. For all of us to spend time with Jesus is a privilege we share. Learn from him, talk to him more, trust him more, serve him more, be like him more, stay awake and pray. 
When did you last allow someone to wash your feet? When did you last find the time to wash somebody else's feet? What might that look like for you in your context? Where are Andrew's feet in your community? Let the blood of Jesus wash the foulest clean. Don't forget, it might be you that needs washing. A lesson I learned the hard way. If I can become a rock, there is no limit to what you can become in the kingdom of God. You are now coming to the end of your Lent journey. Embrace the Messiah's love. Take up your cross and remember that the last thing Jesus said to me of the, the, the resurrection after eating a meal of broiled fish, yes, Jesus cooked our favorite meal, was follow me. Christ alone my hope is found, He is my light, my strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm, what heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, Fullness of God in helpless pay, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones He came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin. On him was laid, here in the death of Christ I stand. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine. Bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand Greetings again dear friends here we are in the Peace Garden at Hedden, 
Methodist Church, a familiar place to many around the circuit, but perhaps a, a first viewing for some, so welcome. Just over in the corner is our Pustinia, which derives its name from a Russian word meaning desert. The garden, amongst other things, is a place of pilgrimage, where any pilgrim, regardless of who they are, finds a place of welcome here. A place of refreshing, solitude and prayer. In our Gospel reading today, we find Jesus in an olive grove on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem and specifically in the Garden of Gethsemane. In John's Gospel, John says he went out with his disciples over the brook of Kidron where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered and Judas who betrayed him also knew the place for Jesus often met there with his disciples. It is no surprise to me that Jesus often used this place with his disciples. This place of sanctuary and prayer. A peace garden. Indeed it would seem to me that an olive grove would be a place that Jesus was often drawn to. A sacred space where he could talk to his Father God. After all, he did grow up in Nazareth, in the region of Galilee. Not just famous for its fishing communities, but also its olive groves. I believe the olive groves were a place he played in as a child, frequented at harvest time, and used as a sanctuary to pray throughout his life. A good place he would steal away to, just like this garden at Heaven. It's also good to remember that olive wood was in abundance at that region. A natural resource that carpenters and wood carvers used. A raw material still in use today for the manufacture of goods. We can learn so much about the command to love and what that might look like for us from today's gospel story, especially from the plight of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Firstly, we observe an appeal for support and friendship. Verse 37 says, And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. The command to love is especially a call to friendship. Jesus in John's Gospel makes a special point of calling his disciples friends. When we look a little closer at the Gospel reading it all started out quite promising as Jesus called Peter and the sons of Zebedee to join him and watch and pray. Three friends in whom Jesus trusted and found true friendship. Reflecting on this friendship, Maud Royden wrote in an article, to love your friends truly is to know them capable of great things. To know them actually capable of doing 
great things. But it is also to know that they may fail and to love them all the same. The problem is we see Peter and others asleep here and later in the gospel story we witness Peter's denial of knowing Jesus on three occasions. And after the resurrection and Peter's reinstatement we hear the challenging question do you love me more than these? It would seem to me the command to love is always the key the measuring stick in our journey of discipleship. Who are we to criticise the disciples here? Or anybody for that matter? We may even see ourselves in this story. The important message here is that we are first friends of Jesus. Loved unconditionally by him, but commanded to serve in love and disciple others in love. Please remember, Jesus always sees us as we can be and not as we are. Do you remember the story of that little man, Zach? Self-isolating in a sycamore tree. Hated by his peers, yet Jesus invites himself to Zach's house for tea. Zach's story is then used as a demonstration of what friendship and love can do. Zach's sinful life is redeemed. He then makes recompense for all he has stolen. And the outcome from this repentance is, well, it's marvellous. Zach's whole household finds redemption. It's worth remembering Zach's story alongside this story of anguish and the truth within it. That when God chooses, he also equips. And the end result is always extraordinary and beyond anything we ever imagined. Can we love like this I believe we can and I hope you can too secondly we learn a big lesson in this desert place with hindsight we know Peter was to become the rock on which Jesus would build his church. And the disciples were to do greater things than Jesus himself. That was despite evidence which was contrary to Jesus' vision for them. They failed Jesus and others. They were seen falling out with each other. And at times, it would unravel into a complete lack of faith. We might, at times, even relate to this ourselves. You see, Gethsemane this unique place is where Jesus unexpectedly becomes isolated and alone. 
He was bereft, frightened, anguished. In the time of his greatest need, he asked his closest friends to be there for him and to watch and pray. Yet he finds himself alone. Does that sound familiar for us? As I said earlier, it had all started out so promising amongst trusted friends. The reality as we see Jesus in anguish, facing this bitter cup alone, it is clear to me that he felt let down by his disciples who fell asleep. In verse 40 we read, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? In verse 41, The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And in verse 45, exasperated, he says, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Tom Wright, in his commentary on this passage, describes Jesus in Gethsemane as a man in meltdown, who is looking into the darkness, I would say, into the abyss alone. Jesus also says in this passage, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. O my Father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And I imagine him looking up to the heavens as he prays. The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. As I reflect on the past few weeks, particularly in the face of everything that the world is facing, I've found this passage forcing its way into my psyche. Despite isolation, Fear, loss, frustration, desperation, death, crisis upon crisis. I see in the midst of it all a cry of complete faith. A triumph of self-sacrifice. A desperate cry of love from the lips of Jesus, for you, for me. The cry is, thy will be done. I'll repeat that, it's so important. Thy will be done. Perhaps a demonstration of love and trust in these times of crisis. A faith statement and what it needs to look like. A faith statement that we must hear and hear it now from the lips of Jesus. From the desert place. A statement of love and faith. Thankfully, we have an opportunity later in this service to say together the Lord's Prayer. A prayer that we've loved many of us from childhood. And an opportunity to affirm as one in that prayer, Thy will 
be done. So, dear friends, in our new reality of isolation, might we ask the following? Does Jesus give us a picture here in this desert place, this garden of Gethsemane, of what discipleship really looks like? Is this a unique time, an opportunity for us as a church? Is this a time where all of us stay together as one on the journey of faith? And despite the adversity, find a zeal in the command to love, watch and pray like we've never seen before. A chance for us to become everything he hoped that a disciple could be. Then despite our fears, together we will discover love that brings obedience to him and to God. And through his command to love, find ourselves in a place ready to exclaim again and again when the circumstances need it thy will be done i really hope and pray that we can And so I finish as one who has genuinely been afraid at this time. God bless you all. And in love and faith, wash your hands. In love and faith, observe the two metre rule. In love and faith, stay at home and isolate away even from family and friends. Protect our NHS and most of all, ourselves. Stay safe. We love you. Amen. We're going to share the prayers of intercession let us pray dear lord on this the night he was betrayed your son jesus christ washed his disciples feet we commit ourselves to follow this his example of love and service help us despite our reality of isolation to continue to remember others especially the lonely help us to be an encouraging community humble and full of grace Lord, hear us and humble us. On this night, Jesus prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church around the world. We pray for our church leaders. May they remain strong and faithful. We pray for and thank you for our circuit staff and leadership team. We pray for the people in our churches at Scotts Gap, Milbourne, Pontyland, Westerhope, Denton Burn, Blucher, Leamington, Hedden and Stamford Uniting Church. We pray also for the projects and initiatives we engage in through partnership. We pray for all involved in the church and the life of the church, especially the many groups who use our churches on a daily basis, feeling just as isolated and vulnerable as we are. Lord, hear us and unite us. On this night, Jesus prayed for those who were to believe through their ministry. We pray for the mission of your church. 
even in this period of isolation. Inspire us and lead us as you direct us into new ways of being church, especially as we engage with our families and communities in this unprecedented period of social distancing. Thank you for the worship and mission we continue to share and those who lead it. Lord, hear us and renew our zeal. On this night, we command, he commanded them to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved in our communities and around the world. May your loving kindness move through us as we continue to find new ways to facilitate the needs of others. Lord, hear us and fill us with your love. On this night, he reminded them that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith, both at home and abroad. Lord, hear us, give us your peace. Lord, we pray for all the victims around the world of COVID-19 for all who have died alone and in isolation. We pray for their families and friends who could only stand afar and watch and pray. We remember in particular Chrissy and give thankful, grateful thanks for her life, for all her gifts that we celebrated among us, knowing that through faith, Chrissy rests eternally with her friend Jesus, whom she loved dearly. We remember with grateful thanks the NHS especially at those on the front line of this pandemic. We thank you for the essential workers, local, national and international, who are going to, going to extraordinary lengths to keep us nourished. And indeed, hopeful in, these, hopeful in these extraordinary times. These and all our prayers we offer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us share the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Here I am in the Pristinia announcing our closing hymn because it's raining <laughs> and a wonderful hymn, a Charles Wesley hymn that we all love, love divine, all loves excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down, enjoy the hymn.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.